for Natural Sciences, Grade 7s, I'm Helen, and today we continue to look at energy transfers in systems. In previous lessons, we have identified that in any system, there is an amount of input energy, and there is output energy. We've also learned that our input energy must equal our output energy. So let's summarize that here. Input energy must equal the output energy. We also know and we learned that we can use Sankey diagrams developed by Matthew Sankey in order to illustrate the energy transfers in a system. And the, uh, the really good advantage of using a Sankey diagram is that it doesn't only show us the input and output, it also splits that output energy into useful as well as wasted energy. And so in this way, we're able to measure the efficiency of an energy transfer system. You'll remember also from the Sankey diagram that we use arrows to show the direction of energy transfer and the width of the arrow tells us something about the amount of energy that we use or that we are producing. So in our last lesson, we compared a filament light bulb with an energy saver light bulb, and we saw that our filament light bulb only produced 10% of the input energy as useful output energy. The rest of the energy was wasted as heat. However, with an energy saver light bulb, 75% of our energy is useful and only 25% is wasted. And this is shown with a smaller arrow compared to a larger arrow for our useful energy. Now let's take this knowledge and let's start applying it to other appliances that you use every day in your home. So let's look at our blender. Now, what is the purpose of the blender? The purpose of the blender is to make the blades spin in order to chop up or mix up whatever it is that we put in the blender. And blenders work with electrical power. So now that we understand what the aim is, that the aim is to produce movement, we can start identifying the energy transfers and labeling them what is the input, what is the useful output, and what is the wasted energy as output. So our energy input is going to be the electrical energy because the blender works with electricity. The useful energy output is concerned and concentrated around the spinning of the blades. So we're getting our useful energy output as kinetic energy and the particular kind of kinetic energy, it's mechanical energy, the mechanical energy of the moving blades. But no one can talk to you while you are using the blender because it makes an awfully loud sound and you only should be switching on our blender for about a minute at a time because this little machine in here is working so hard and it also therefore produces heat energy. So you can't leave it running on its highest setting for more than a minute or the motor will get too hot. So we've identified all of the kinds of energy and we know from the law of conservation that our energy input must equal our useful energy plus our wasted energy. So let's label our Sankey diagram for this system. So we can say that our energy input 
and the form of the energy input is electrical energy is 100%. This time we're measuring the energy input in terms of percentages rather than in actual joules. We know that 70% and have a look at the width of the arrow, 70% of the energy is our useful energy. That is the kinetic energy that is associated with the turning of the blades. But a certain percentage, which we need to fill in, and we can see that this arrow is less or not as wide as our main energy output, is the production of sound and thermal energy, which is wasted energy. Now, according to our law of conservation, the input energy must be equal to our useful output plus our wasted output. And hopefully you can look here and do the maths. 70 subtracted from 100% gives us 30%. So we can fill in here that 30% of the energy that is put into the system is actually wasted. So if we were going to design a better blender, a more efficient blender, what would we be aiming to do? Well, we would be aiming to reduce our 30% wasted energy. And if we're going to be reducing it, it means we're going to have to find ways to make it quieter, not so noisy. And if we can make it not so noisy, we might be able to channel some of that energy to more useful energy. And if we can make the system not overheat, so not get very hot, we would also be making our system more efficient. So do you see how an analysis like a Sankey diagram can help designers improve machines and appliances to make them more energy efficient. And why on earth would we need something to be energy efficient? Number one, energy costs money. And if you're going to have 30% of your money thrown away as a waste, that's not a good system to have at all. But also, not only does our energy cost money, it's using resources such as coal to produce the input energy in the first place, the electricity. And we know that coal is a non-renewable energy source and that it pollutes the environment. So if we can conserve our energy and channel our energy towards useful, efficient source, uh, forms of energy, we are making the system more efficient. We're not wasting energy. Let's look at a car. What is our useful energy? What do we want the car to do? But what does the car also produce as wasted energy? Well, we know, first of all, that our energy input is going to be in the form of fuel. We're going to put petrol into our car. And the fuel is a form of chemical potential energy. Our useful energy is the mechanical energy that is a form of kinetic energy because we want the car to move forward. But the car makes a lot of noise. So sound energy is wasted. And if you put your hand over the place where the engine is, we also have a lot of heat energy that is wasted. In terms of the law of conservation, our energy input must equal our useful energy output plus our wasted energy. And I'm sure you see where we're going. We're going to a Sankey diagram. And we're now going to see how energy efficient is our car. 
Well, we know that 100% of the energy is our input energy, and it's in the form of potential energy because it's the fuel. 30%, we don't know what it is allocated to, but we do know that some of the energy output, in fact, the large majority of our energy, results in sound and heat. So if we've got 100% and we know that we must have our useful plus our wasted energy equaling 100%, we know that we've got 30% that is going to be the useful energy, which now we can identify as our kinetic mechanical energy, and minus our 30 from our 100%, 70% is wasted. So is a motor car that works with petrol fuel very energy efficient? No, it isn't. For all of the money that you throw into the fuel tank, you're only getting 30% out that is efficient. So we need to make the car cooler, not heat up so much, and I know you like the way your fast car sounds, but we need to decrease the wasted sound energy. Now, let's insert the values in joules and split the wasted energy output to make our car Sankey diagram even more accurate. Up to this point, all our Sankey diagrams have had the input and only two outputs. We've taken all of our useful energy in one arrow and all of our wasted energy in another arrow. But Sankey diagrams can be more complicated. We can have lots of outputs. So we've got our chemical potential energy from burning petrol and we've labeled it as 100,000 joules. The kinetic energy that we've spoken about, which is the movement of our car forward, that is at 38,000 joules. And that is useful energy. Now we see that coming off our useful energy arrow, we've got a small arrow indicating 2,000 joules are allocated to working the lights, working the radio, and recharging the battery. And so we can add up here that 40,000 joules are in fact useful, and we've, we've split our useful energy into two different forms, and our heat and sound make up 60,000. When we add 60,000 and 40,000, we get a 100,000, so we know that the law of conservation of energy has been observed. Now here's your challenge. A television set uses 80% of the input energy to make images on the screen and the sound. Now that we would say, seeing the pictures and hearing the sound, that is our useful energy. And it's 80%, so we can go to our widest arrow and we can put here 80% of our energy which is used for light, in other words to see the pictures, and sound. But thermal energy, the television gets hot, is going to make up 20% and we can see that our arrow is much narrower than our 80% useful energy. And 80% plus 20%, that's our output energy, must equal 100%, which is our input. So our input is in electrical energy, and our input is 100%. Do you see how easy it is to work with Sankey diagrams? We're going to look at more Sankey diagrams in our future lessons. You're going to learn how to draw them. But more importantly, you're going to be able to look at a system and say, is this an energy efficient system or is it rather inefficient and wasting a lot of energy? But more next time. For today, grade sevens, goodbye.